is Dish It With The Delco Duo Time. We solve all your problems, no matter what. Neighbors, coworkers, <laughs> spouses. We try to, at least. I, we don't even, we, we, a lot of times, it's not about solving, it's just talking. Talking it through. you through it. Talking you through it. Talking you out of the spiral. Off the ledge. It's Thursday. This week's been going pretty fast. Yeah, it went really, really, really fast. And January's done. Yes. Bye. February. I like February. You said you did not like February that much. I I just think I hear so many people, I feel bad, like Nick, our, our anchor. He's like, oh, you know, February hits and I'm looking forward to spring. And I'm like, hold your horses. This month can get really rough. It can get so really So it's cold. more of a weather standpoint that you don't like the month of February. Everything is weather standpoint for me. <laughs> this has nothing to do with weather. This is just yes. how you feel. So weather side, say there's no snowstorms. Of course, it's winter. What do you feel about February? Um, I do like there's a bit of a feel of like Valentine's the whole month. That the whole month to me is like Valentine's based, and I find it's it, an excuse to eat chocolate the entire month. Th- I not feel. even chocolate, but like warm and, and love, love hearts and stuff. I do, and and I I love Valentine's Day. Well, maybe February will bring in some good issues for us because that's yes. when couples really have a chance to look at their love. Go, you know, north or south. <laughs> Either. Exactly. And it's also hard, I think, Valentine's Day on social media because you see some people posting these yes. beautiful bouquet of flowers and you're thinking, why didn't my husband no. do that? Or why didn't my boyfriend take me to that restaurant? Yes. So I think it's, I, I would agree that it's a make or break time in relationships. We had someone on the show and they said, and I thought it was such a good point, good and bad relationships post on social media on valentine's day on valentine's day so. you could have a horrible fight and you're probably still going to be posting which is okay happy valentine's day i i i truly believe like just because you had you know a bad week or you know your, your relationship's going through a rough patch doesn't mean you shouldn't show appreciation for that person and you know kind of don't use also social media silent social media as a way to get back at your other at your spouse and like Oh yeah, I'm not. We're fighting. You. I'm not posting about you. <laughs> That's not nice either. The world we live in is so yes. messed up. <laughs> and I always find your philosophy with Valentine's Day so interesting. So you and your husband, you do legitimate gifts. Yes. Whereas me, I'm like, I just want some flowers, a nice dinner. I, d- I don't want to do an actual gift. I'm surprised. But you know, this is your first Valentine's married, married. so you'll have to say. Um, We'll have to see. I didn't get Tate anything, so hopefully. You're not getting anything. (laughs) No, nothing. We're going to go to dinner, and we're going to call it, we're going to call it a Valentine's Day. No, get him a little something, something. We just bought a house. I feel like for the next year, our gifts are the house. The gift is the house. That's very, very true, you know, um, but even like a little decor thing. Like, is there something that he's been wanting for the house? For decor? Decor. Oh my gosh. Well, I don't this know. This man could care less about decor. Eugene buys our decor. He, that, the other day that he is bought, shocking. He bought, um, what did he buy? Uh, what are those things called? Planners? Planners? Okay. Yeah. So like a pot? It, no, but you hang it on the wall. Oh, okay. And uh, it, But just, you have to plant live Yes, you have to. That's what I said. No, I was like, I don't mm-hmm. want to hang like a live plant on my soil, wall. soil on soil. the floor. Am I watering this? I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> so it sounds like he bought a job for you well, to then take care yes, of. He, he likes the look of it, but I've never seen. Fill him it take with a fake a one. Plant. Fill it with a fake one. He won't know the difference. I guess sometimes those fake plants are ugly. Well, I think they make like the succulents nowadays that are fake. I don't think you can tell the difference personally. Okay. Maybe I'll do a fake succulent, although. You know, sometimes it is fun. If you're doing a good job with the plant and watering it. Keyword, good job. Good job. You can really feel accomplished. And I know people who are like obsessed with plants are like, yeah, that's why I love it. I don't love having plants in my house for that reason. But give it a go. Did your um, growing up at a, in a Catholic school, did you guys love St. Valentine? and like watch the story of St. Valentine? We definitely talked about it a lot on Valentine's Day. I don't yes. remember personally being like, oh, I can't wait to, to talk I about St. Valentine. I loved, I loved the story I of St. Valentine. I was more looking forward to the shoe boxes and you know, giving Valentines to my classmates. Okay, I was, so, I was really into St. Valentine and the actual person. 
I thought it's interesting. So just a little history. He That's not Saint Valentine. That's Eugene. That's <laughs> That's that's my Valentine. Yes. Uh so Saint um real quick Saint Valentine was a Catholic martyr and he would um before he was martyred and and killed, he would marry Catholic couples in hiding. Like they weren't allowed to be married. Okay. Um but he would marry them in secret. Um, and so that's why his feast day is the celebration of like love. I never knew that. And I should know that as I went beautiful, to isn't school it? for it's 12 beautiful. years. <laughs> it is beautiful. Lo love can, under any circumstance, love prevails. We have pictures of yours. I, I, oh, oh, there we are. Classy, Jenna. Yeah, so our Valentine's Day plans, as I said, we are doing dinner and that's about it. Well, I mean, maybe that's the thing is, is Eugene and I need to do presents because we're definitely not going out to dinner on Monday well, night. Yeah, that makes sense. But for the weekend, I mean, we're not going to do it on actual Valentine's Day either. We're, we're going to make it a, a Friday night thing. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I guess it's different because you have the two little ones and you, you know, you got to get care for them. And then yep. so um, before we get into the issue, one of an issue I had. And speaking of dinner, I, know, I just <laughs> we are jumping towards the end of this I, podcast no, right now. Your issues at the end of the. I just real quick. I'm so irritated. So I found out my family. Um, you know, we. You, I told you we were doing family dinner on Friday. On yeah. Friday. Yep. Tomorrow. I just learned that my family ditched me and Eugene with our children, and they made reservations in the city. My sister, my brother, my mom, my dad, and my brother's wife are now going to the city for dinner, and they're ditching us because they don't. They want to do like a fun dinner out in the city and, the and they don't want cramp, the kids. Cramp in the style. I am so offended by this. You know, this is hard as someone that you doesn't understand. have kids yet. And But your sisters like. Yes. Yeah, so I can understand like, oh, let's go to a funky city restaurant. But, you know, Ugh, the kids. Why don't they just want to come to my house and I'll make them dinner? I'll make meatballs. I'll I don't know. Pasta. I might have to side with the family here. And I'm I know that's not what you want to hear, but I could totally understand why you are offended by this. I would be I would be hurt by this. I'm as sad well. about it. And now I'm like, should I get a babysitter? And usually it's like for a random we can't we can't afford a babysitter on a random Friday night just so we can go to dinner with your family. Oh, have kids, they said. Yeah. All right. So we've got some great issues this week. Thank you as always for submitting yes. your problems to us. And Monica, we're gonna kick it off with Brenda from Boothwin. We teased this last week. Yeah, and this was interesting. I think my partner loves me more than I love them. Okay, so... As someone who's definitely on the receiving end of all the love... Yes. <laughs> no. There, there, you know, there was a time, like, Eugene and I would talk about it, and, like, we would joke, and Eugene's like, I definitely love you more. And I'm like, no, you don't. Like, I love you the same. Um... Your relationships can kind of be up and down, you know what I mean? Even with who loves who more. I think that it depends on the timing yes. and the situations. There's definitely situations where I feel I love Tate more than he loves me yes. or Tate feels that he loves totally. me. I think it all depends on the circumstances. So to have this just as a statement all the time is not realistic. Yes. The only thing is it sounds like Brenda's kind of annoyed with it. Well, that's well, what I mentioned last week, the golden retriever energy. Yes. Oh, you did say that. Okay, so go ahead. So that I've seen that more and more on social media, this, mm -hmm. this idea of describing someone as a golden retriever. And it kind of makes sense. Like a golden retriever is never going to get mad at you. And... Yes. <laughs> We're just going to show you that little graphic there. Live, live TV. A golden retriever uh, is never going to get mad at you. And they're kind of just like always wanting to be around you. So that's annoying. So that can be annoying. Yes. Like that clinginess of like, yeah. oh my gosh, like golden retrievers are adorable, but give me a second. Right. I think Brenda from Booth, when this, if this is a long-term relationship and there's a period of feeling like, oh my gosh, my partner is definitely really into me right now. I have, I have actually thought that, and Eugene will be all smiley and cuddly. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Give but, me a break. Yeah, but it's so cute. It's so fun. Relish it, you know? Soak yeah. it up. You, someone loves you. That's that's the, uh, th this is so cheesy. That's the greatest gift in the entire
entire world is someone loves you. Monica, right? You know, it's so touching. You know, so soak it up. But if if it's the golden retriever energy, and you kind of are like, I'm not even sure I love this person. Well, then you got that, a uh, that's a problem. If you right. if they're showering you in love, and you're thinking like, do I do I love this person? Maybe not the relationship for you to be in. No, Brenda, I would I would then you kind of got to look at not just the day to day. It's got to be in general. What is your outlook on this relationship if it's constant? If the scales are yes. always tipping the wrong way. And then. that golden retriever, I love that explanation. Then you know what? Cut this person loose. They deserve to be in a relationship with someone who is equally, not equal, because again, it's up and down, but who at times- Will reciprocate. Yeah, will feel like, you know what? I think I love this person more than they love me today. Yeah. I think that's so important by yes. saying today because today. it changes. Some days I'm going to hate you yes. and I'm going to think you're really annoying. Yes. But as long as it, it comes full circle, then yes. you're, in, you're in a normal relationship. Exactly. It happens. It happens. Jeez, right. Brenda. Lighten <laughs> up. Brenda, <laughs> wish I was in your situation. After after years of marriage, it's definitely, there's less days where I'm like, oh, Eugene loves me so much. Loves me so much. I used to say that all the time. I, I don't say it as much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have Chase from Chester. This is very timely. Uh, my yes. neighbor saves his Snowden parking spot with a chair. Oh, the Philly Conference, as it's called. I was going to say, you know, these are completely anonymous and I just choose a random town. So I chose Chester because Chester, you know, in Delco is the most city to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, they're still parking in the streets sometimes and, and fighting over parking spots. I have never lived in Chester. Um, I've never lived in Philly. So I have never had this issue. That always, I always forget that you've never lived actually in, in Philly. Philly. I, it's a battle when it snows for these parking spots because yes. people will not move until spring if your snow your car snowed in and you can get to work on a different way whether yes. it's mass transit whether you can walk working from home now yes. people are not moving these cars until the snow melts and it's nice crazy it, it's it is crazy Bad for your car too you should be running your car and, and moving it every so often it's also illegal to be saving spots philly always posts philly parking authority will always post these reminders like you cannot save your spot with a chair with a cone so so what is it you you dig yourself out of yep. out of the spot you leave to go somewhere you leave to go so and you feel like that should be your, your spot. spot because you took the time to dig out and clear this spot so when you get back, you're not digging out a new spot and you're not circling this block until you find a parking spot. That is your deserved spot. So what then would you do if you saw this? Not necessarily you, but, you know, a, a really tough and rumble Philly person. I'm sorry, Jenna, I know. <laughs> what? I scream tough and rumble, no, okay? No, Would you get out and remove the chair? Oh, I've seen it time and time again. People do not Have care. Have you removed the chair? I would not because yes. I would just, I would. I would be afraid. I, I would be afraid that this person's either in their house watching and they're going to be really pissed and come out and give me the, you know, the, the lowdown. Yes. But I have seen and I have friends who have removed these safe spots because again it's not it's not your spot you don't pay for the spot that's that's my thinking is some people do buy spots yeah and they cost thousands and thousands of dollars if you do not pay thousands and thousands I, I mean a spot in Philadelphia is property so you're basically saying this is my property no it's not if you're not paying a ton of money because it's Philly any little inch of land there costs a ton of money then no you have no right to put a chair there yeah and and now we have the issue of the empty lots people park on in the empty lots and it's just kind of a free-for-all you're parking people in I when I went to Temple University empty lots were notorious for being like a student parking lot yes these cars are covered in mud it's definitely, you know, you need to get out. Someone parked in behind you. Someone's right. on both of your so sides. Scary. It's just, it's a mess. And that's why this this issue of, I, I don't know how to solve it for you because it's just a long, it's an issue that's been here for a while and is going to stay here for a while. It's not going away. Yeah, I think the other thing like we were talking about though, what's so difficult about the situation is it's not a random person that you don't see every day that saves this spot. It's, it's probably your neighbor. neighbor. Yeah. So therefore you do have to see this person. If they see you remove, the last thing you want to do is create a bad situation with your neighbor that you have to live next to for, you know, eons. I would, 
I don't know. Me, to I, me, I, I would, would just talk to them and say, hey, so when are you coming back? Because I'll park here. <laughs> I'll take the spot. And then when you come back, you dug it out. I'll go to a different spot. I'll try to find another spot. But by in that way, you're making it, I think, in a good way, making it passive aggressive where you're not necessarily saying, dude, move your car. But if you put it that way, like, hey, when are you leaving so I can uh, uh, park my car? Then they'll kind of get the clue that they're not the only ones who have this issue. Like, yeah. Everybody in Philly is dealing with these uh, snowed in parking spots. But you can't do anything about someone who doesn't need to move their car. When I lived in Philly, yes. you know, I like to park right in front of my apartment door. We leave early in the morning. I would see cars parked out front of my door months on end and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it and sometimes it's not even neighbors it's a person who lucked out they live a few blocks away and they're like and they're good they're never going to move their car so i also do feel as though um as as a family member um to my brother and sister who both live in philly and now refuse to leave the city because they don't want to move their cars they don't want to move their car it makes me sad they won't invite me to dinner and then they won't come to my house because they don't want to move their car. Don't let that control. I don't your know life. if the car is the problem. I just don't know if they want to see you. That might be the bigger issue. That's what I'm realizing. <laughs> I think the car is just me. an excuse to not hang out with you, oh. Ronnie and Leah. I don't. I don't blame you guys. This has been quite eye-opening. So, but I, I have again, more we, issues. Than Chase, I we, we can't solve this. I mean. Unless we start giving tickets out and towing cars, there's nothing we can do. But again, it's not about solving. It's just talking Chase through, letting him realize that everyone's dealing with this. It's not just you, Chase. Chasey Chase. All right. We have... Oh, Faye. That's a new name. I had a girl in my sorority. Her name was Faye. Faye. Isn't that... Well, you kind of got on me last week for my weird names. Well, we we had a lot of Allegra's. We needed to switch it up. So, Faye from Folsom. I like this issue. Okay. My boyfriend has a lot of sexy TikToks saved, and it makes me feel bad. Didn't even know you could save a TikTok. That's news to me. Uh, Jenna, I was going to say, I don't don't know the first thing about TikTok. (laughs) So I didn't, you know, um, what does that mean to save? I guess you can, like, favorite it, and it'll be in a different folder for you to go back at and and rewatch. Because Instagram has, like, saved Mm -hmm. collections. So that's what I'm picturing. And I think there's a difference. You could also save to your phone. Like, I think you can save TikTok videos to your phone. Okay. If you're saving sexy TikTok no to your no. phone, done. If you're saving it to, like, Instagram so that you can go back and look at them again, or, sorry, TikTok. Done. Both? Done. What's the difference no, between I, those I, situations? Done and done. I, I think it's so hard because, okay, so we've had the Instagram debate prior to TikTok where your boyfriend's liking the bikini pics, your boyfriend's screenshotting the fitness pics, and, you know, they're, they're, they are co- continuing to pop up. Where Instagram used to expose people, it would be like Monica crying likes. Remember yes. that page where you could see? Yes. And that caused a lot of issues for people. Yes. And now with TikTok, they do their best to follow community guidelines, like all social media platforms. There's some racy stuff on there. Yeah. I think, and even on Instagram, you know, people will say like, oh, I I didn't even follow this or I don't even like this kind of stuff. You you do. There's an algorithm. It has figured it out. (laughs) It figured out what you like to look at. So don't act like this is, oh, I'm sorry, this just popped up. No, it didn't. Your For You page. That's the equivalent on TikTok. Your FYP. Yes. Your For You page comes up. Do not act. You know what my For You page is full of? Encanto. I would like that to change. (laughs) I would like sexy pictures popping up on my For You page, but Encanto is popping up. And that just says a lot more about me. But I, guys, like even sometimes, you know, I went on Eugene's and I was like, Mm-mm, I don't like your for you page. You got to change this, buddy. Change your algorithm. Hell is all this time. Stop looking at these ladies. It's just I I think with TikTok, which is also interesting, is I heard of an incident before where a girlfriend had sent her boyfriend a funny TikTok. He then watched it. TikTok on your time. So if I send you a TikTok and yes. you have an account and you watch it, yes. TikTok notifies me that M. Cryan watched your TikTok. Oh. So this girl had sent her boyfriend, she didn't know that he had a TikTok account, a funny video. She gets the notification that he has watched the video. She clicks on his then profile that she did not know no. existed. Tons of sexy TikToks. Liked. Oh, no. So that's another way that TikTok is exposing people 
that need to be exposed. Uh, if, if you're in a relationship, you probably shouldn't be liking the sexy TikToks. Yeah, come and they can get really I, yeah, sex. I'm, I'm surprised half the time that you know this this is passing on an app that children are using, and it's not there are just, children on this app. Yes, and it's not just girls either. I mean, some of these guys constantly shirtless, doing weird faces like this, <laughs> dancing. You know, they it looks like they're putting in the least amount of effort into every dance move, but it's swap. It's sultry. It's sultry. It's like mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it is the weirdest thing, but. I, I would be concerned. I do think. If so what do you do? It, you ask them to stop? Yeah. I, I asked Eugene. I was like, you're, you're so what, you what was Eugene's for you page? So I think it was like a lot of, you know, the sports stuff, like a lot of these, the fitness, the fitness yes. stuff. I'm like, I don't think you realize it, but you're the it, big booty girls. Yes. Squatting in these, in these, <laughs> these leggings that are like heart shaped. They sound like Karen's right now. <laughs> The girls were squatting in their they're, leggings. They're squatting and doing <laughs> jump squats, and I don't appreciate it because my jump squats don't look like that. I, I'm picturing, though, the really tiny waist. Oh, my God. Where, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where does that – where do these it's, women get blessed? I don't know. Um, on Eugene's For You page. <laughs> and I said, you got to change it. You got to stop looking at them. If you stop looking – then the algorithm will change. Start start watching Encanto clips, okay? That'll start popping up on your For You so page. So what, have you looked at the For You page in no, a while? I didn't, I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't really care too, too much. I, I think I that think, you need to look at this For You page again. I need to know what's on it. It's more of a joke of like, um, but for, for, for Faye, it's not a joke because he's saving them. He's saving them. If he's saving and it them, makes me feel bad. That is sad. sad. That's sad that she has to express that it's made to two random strangers. But I mean, it really, it comes to the basics of I feel bad when you <laughs> see <laughs> that is sexy no. TikToks. <laughs> There's no guessing. There's no guessing game here. Like yes. Why Faye's upset? Yes. Why Faye? It's you just said it right there. It is a very simple statement. I feel bad. So I love lamp. <laughs> that's, that's what this reminds me of from Anchorman. Yes. I love lamp. I feel bad. Change it. And stop doing that. That's that's not okay. I'm, I'm your gal. And you got to bring it up at least once if that doesn't change after the one time. Well, then you don't want it to become something like a shady because now he knows he's caught and now he's secretly saving these TikToks. Right. So that's why TikTok has to stay on it. Keep it, you know, if he makes a new account. Faye's gonna know. But maybe he doesn't even, like, sometimes I think they don't even realize it's it's not Make appropriate. So just put it out there no, in the universe. I disagree. <laughs> you gotta know if you're saving sexy TikToks, that is not appropriate. It might, he might just be saving the workout sexy TikToks and he's like, I need to learn how to squat. Yeah. I don't know how to squat. I'm sure. The big, how does this girl the big booty tight waist needs to help bottom, him. <laughs> apple bottom booty. <laughs> okay. How, how does she squat? Say, just, just, you, you gotta just Bring express it up, this. And yep. then if it doesn't change, out of there. All right, sexy TikToks, <clears throat> gotta love it. All right, topic four. This is my personal issue that I'm bringing to the table this week. Dish towel showdown. So, I think a lot of women deal with this issue. Let it out. And I know that you are probably going to know as soon as, what I'm gonna say as soon as I say it. The decorative dish towel. Yes. Is a very hard concept for my husband to grasp. <laughs> I have these dish towels out and they're nice and we like them. So tell me why in the kitchen, in the kitchen mm -hmm. on the oven. Okay. You know, fold it over. Yeah. So tell me why I go to use the dish towel the other day and it is just covered in this Whoa. orange sauce substance. Covered. covered. The dish towel's ruined. I asked Tate, what the heck happened here? Uh -huh. He made chicken for work. He, he does the meal prep. He makes yes. it for work. He dry. There was, it was this chicken that was in this seasoning. He yes. cleaned the pan and then dried it with the decorative dish towel. Oh. Do you have regular dish towels? I do, but I don't think he knows where they are. Okay. And I think he, I mean, I can't blame him that he thought that this dish towel was. Sure. But orange chicken? Orange chicken. Don't Does use he, the dish towel. How nice is the dish towel? Does he have pride in this <laughs> dish towel? He, I have pride in the dish towel. I put it out because I thought it was cute. Did that's why making him a part of the purchasing process 
so I, like I, when I go to Home Goods and Eugene and I are looking at things, he when he buys an item, he, he treats, wants to keep it nice. He treats that item better. Yeah. So therefore, make him a part of the process. Do you like this dish towel or this dish? Well, towel? a lot of this is bridal shower. So oh, I wow. have a dish towel stack this big. I picked my probably my favorite one to put out first. Orange chicken all over it. Orange and he's like, chicken. well, then you need to put out a second towel that that I can use because I I, I I thought that this was the towel that we used to dry. He's like, I'm trying to not use as many paper towels. OK, so now he cares about the earth like that's a great thing. But never right. before has he been worried about using too many paper towels. I was like, that's an excuse. Right. Because, you know, you messed up. Right. Yes, he, he should have known. He should have seen it's a very nice dish towel. Don't put orange on it. Oh my God. I just, I, mean, I washed it and nothing came out. It's it's ruined. It's, it's done. It's done. It's but done. You so. will go through all of the stuff from your wedding. There's, you're going to throw that stuff out. Tip to me, it. never start with my favorite. Because yeah. clearly, so you now. You guys are exploring this homeowner. Yes. So now that's going to be the dish towel that he can use because it's ruined. Okay. Yeah. But I think. He's going to wear it like a scarlet letter. I, I <laughs> ruined this dish towel. <laughs> I had to explain to him the idea of a decorative dish towel. Does, is that something that yes. Eugene understands? Now he does. So After you had eight to. Years of marriage. Okay, great. I'm screwed crazy. then. I am not 50 years old. <laughs> I have just been. I got married really young. So after eight years of marriage, yes, he now gets a decorative dish towel. I'll also be honest with you. That lasted in our house for like two years, even before we had kids, and then we just got rid. So, of do you our have dish a dish towel out? Yeah, we have, but ugly ones that I really do not care. So, about. do they have like stains and stuff on them? They have stains. I mean, I wash them. See, that um, bothers me. I'm not gonna hang a dish towel up for people to see that has an orange like, stain on it. It's yeah, okay, that one needs to go. I don't have orange stains on my dish towels. <laughs> and I meant to bring it in today to show, and I'm so mad that I forgot it. Maybe next Thursday, and I'll just say real quick. To, uh, yeah, a dish towel is for it's drying bad. and, and um, when it's totally clean. So you're not getting, like, orange stuff on it. Um, how, maybe, and that's the other issue. Like, on his cleaning. How good did you clean this? Why, why is it how, orange? Why is it orange still? <laughs> but, do, Jenna, don't forget. Don't put the, the dish towels that you use, mine get, like, wet because I'm also like wiping things mm -hmm. down, they got to stay hung up somewhere or else they're going to get moldy. Well, that's the thing. So w I, I don't know what to do. Do I get another hook? Because I want the ones on the oven to be the cute ones. Yes. This is such a minor issue in the grand scheme of things. But it's but I just This is issue. my truth. This is my story is to share. Issue. And I just needed to know if there's a better way I to would do this. I would definitely get another hook. Hang it on kind of like the inside where it's not really, you know, close to the oven and stuff or wherever you use. Hang it inside the oven? Not inside the oven. <laughs> close to the oven. <laughs> where do you hang things close to an oven? Well, sorry. I use my dish towels to take uh, the hot stuff out of the oven, too. So what do you use to dry? So you use it both. It's a dual use. It's a dual use. Okay. It's a dual use. Wow. And mine still aren't dirty. <laughs> With all the I wear think this and is, tear. I, and Tate usually does a great job because I do the cooking, Tate does the dishes. That's yes. just the way we work. And I've, That's great. it's never been a problem before, but I think it was just this chicken. Yeah, it was just the chicken, but now it's done. He Now he knows the decorative. Well, he's like, now you're making me feel bad. Where'd you get this dish towel? I'm like, it was a gift. But that's what I'm saying. I don't know where I got Make it from. Make him a part of the purchasing process. Let him have pride in all that he's buying for the kitchen. I'm telling you. And then it gets annoying. And then we made wings on Sunday, and he oh, the, the, the matching dish towel he also ruined. So that's the two matching set. I was like, if you're going to ruin one, might as well ruin the other one because now they're both going to be covered in disgusting chicken. Chicken. <laughs> so. GD chicken. Uh, and it's like TikTok knew what I was dealing with. They, they, I saw a TikTok a woman posted about how her sexy husband. <laughs> it wasn't a sexy TikTok. Sexy TikTok. <laughs> how her husband didn't understand the concept of a decorative dish towel. And I'm like, the little FBI See? agent yes. in my phone is working overtime right now. They know. They know the problems that you're going through. Yeah, I would totally get another type of dish towel that you don't mind. And then hang your decorative ones up. Same kind of thing for the bathrooms <sighs> and those towels. Well, that was a half hour that flew by. Where'd the time go? All right, so next week, what are we going to talk about, Monica? When do you know it's time to end a long-term friendship? Oh, This one's tough. Friends are, t friends, friends are tough. All right. Well, in the meantime, though, lots of places to reach us if you have an issue or you are inspired by this conversation and you just want to talk to us about what we talked about. What are you looking for? 
time. <laughs> we have about 20 seconds, so whatever right. you're going to say, get it out. Okay, yeah, yeah. So send us, send us Instagram, your Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Not TikTok. I said that last week. We will not answer TikTok. We're only looking at sexy TikToks. Sexy TikToks <laughs> only, please. Thank you. All right. Have a great Thursday.